Okay, let's talk about the spinopalatine or pterygopalatine ganglion intervention under fluoroscopy. Let us begin with anatomy and understand the boundaries of the fossa. This is the lateral view of the skull where the mandible has been removed. Let us focus on the arrow mark area. Let us take a closer look. There is an opening between two bones. Anteriorly, it is the maxilla, while posteriorly, it is the lateral pterygoid plate of sphenoid bone. This opening is called pterygopalatine fissure. It is the door of the pterygopalatine fossa. Now, if we look at a sagittal section taken more medially through the sphenopalatine fossa, we can clearly see the maxilla anteriorly and posteriorly it is the medial pterygoid plate, not the lateral pterygoid plate. And between them, we can see the sphenopalatine ganglion within the sphenopalatine fossa. To understand the boundaries better, let us see a schematic diagram of axial section through the zygomatic arch. We see from above at this red marked area, but of course at a lower level, at the level of zygomatic arch. So, uh, sphenopalatine fossa lies in between the nasal cavity and the infratemporal fossa. Through the pterygopalatine fissure, pterygopalatine fossa is accessible from lateral side. A coronal section through the pterygopalatine fossa will look like this. Let us see a lateral view under fluoroscopy. Just posterior to the maxillary sinus, there are few vertical lines. These lines are formed by the posterior bony margin of the maxilla and bony margin of the pterygoid process. Two lines from right and two lines from left. They are seen and should be overlapping each other. When not overlapped, both the fissures from right side and left side can be seen clearly but separately. Or it can be very indistinguishable also. But on the other hand, when it is overlapped, it is a clear pterygomaxillary fissure. Here, this both the uh, margins of both sides are more or less overlapped. Let us consider the technical aspects of the uh, needle entry of the on the skin. So this phenopalatine ganglion intervention is never a tunnel view approach. And our skin entry is under the zygoma and, and in the mandibular notch. So if we divide the mandibular notch in four quadrants, then posterior and caudal quadrant is the is for skin entry point. Needle direction is medial, cephalate, and slightly posterior. Needle is being progressed. So uh, here in this right side, you may think that needle has reached the target area. But if we see the corresponding AP view, we can see that needle is needle tip is still far from reaching the correct area. So needle has been progressed more. And now, now the needle tip has reached to the lateral wall of the nasal bone. You can see, you can compare with the schematic diagram and the needle trajectory is expected to be like this. This is the final needle tip position. In true AP view, the needle tip at the lateral wall of the nose, at the superior and medial aspect of the maxillary sinus. In a true lateral view, this is the upper part of the pterygopalatine fissure. Questions for the visitors. Final needle tip should be evaluated in a true AP view and a true lateral view. So question is, are, you, are we seeing a true lateral view here in this picture? What are the points in favor or against? Is true AP view is also necessary here, important here? Not possible to explain procedures in full detail in five minutes. Please join Asian Pain Academy to know the procedures in detail.